There are many reasons that China should be focused on inequality, social justice, and on children. One of them has been highlighted in my book, The Price of Inequality, and highlighted by the IMF, is a, you might call an instrumental reason that countries with less inequality perform better, grow faster, uh, more stable. But I think there are more fundamental values at stake. What kind of society do we want to live in? Do we want to live in a society in which some people have access, have, uh, have access to riches and others are suffering? Uh, we know, as we look around the world, what those kinds of societies are like. I visited many of them, and I can tell you it's not these are not places where most people would want to live. So I think divided societies are very different from societies where there is this kind of shared prosperity. In fact, I've argued the only real prosperity is shared prosperity. The only really successful societies are those where there are, is social justice. And an agenda of social justice has to begin with children. It has to begin with an agenda that says every child, no matter who its parents are, has to have access to adequate nutrition, adequate health care, and adequate education. China uh, is, has done more to reduce poverty around the world than any country in any point in history. 500 million people have moved out of poverty. You know, this is really one of the big events of world history. I don't think we've celebrated it sufficiently. At the same time, you look at the data on the standard measure of inequality, the Gini coefficient, and inequality in China has increased, starting from a very low level, uh, to levels that are roughly comparable to that in the United States. And I sometimes jokingly say that it took America a very long time to achieve this high level of inequality, and China achieved this in, you know, three or four decades. But there is a fundamental difference between inequality in China and in advanced countries, and that was highlighted by the work of Kuznets uh, a half century ago. And, he pointed out that in early stages of development, there is a natural growth of inequality. That is to say, some parts of the country pull out faster, grow faster than others because they seize the new opportunities. You saw it in China, the East Coast growing faster than the West. There's a, a natural proclivity of urban areas to grow relative to the rural areas. These kinds of divides naturally occur in early stages of development, and then as development occurs, those behind catch up with those that are ahead. So the hypothesis that Kuznets put forward was that in the early stages of development, there was a growth of inequality. In later stages, that there would be a decrease. China fixed that early period of the increase of inequality. Unfortunately, Kuznets' prediction about advanced countries turned out to be wrong. United States and many other countries, after a period in which inequality came down very dramatically, beginning around 1980, inequality started to grow. The challenge facing China is, is it going to follow the pattern that Kuznets identified, where there was, yes, an initial period of inequality and then a decline of inequality? Is it going to skip that middle period and have that initial period of inequality just continue so that it imitates what has happened in, in the worst examples in the advanced countries, the United States being among the worst uh, of those examples? Um, that's an open question. But key in understanding what's going to be happening in China in the future is what happens to the children because 
to me, one of the most important aspects of inequality is inequality of opportunity. Children don't choose their parents. And therefore, it's almost a, a, a basic moral obligation to say, whoever your parent are, you should have the opportunity to live up to your potential. It's also an economic issue. If you don't make sure that all children live up to their potential, you're wasting your most valuable resource. What we've learned in countries all over the world is we have not been doing enough about this problem of inequality of opportunity, and we've not been focusing enough on our children. We've not been doing enough, particularly for very young children. The consequence uh, of not paying attention to children, the consequences of not paying enough to your children, will be felt for years to come. Now you look at the data, what you see is that a much larger fraction of children are in poverty than of adults. And that's partly because that families that are in poverty tend to have larger, a larger number of, of children. So childhood poverty is in some sense a more uh, pervasive problem than poverty in general. Well, there's no single instrument with which you can deal with problems of social justice, with problems of inequality. Inequality is multifaceted. Uh, there are problems at the top, too much money going to the people at the top. There's problems at the bottom, too little going to the people at the bottom, too much poverty. And each part of the inequality has its own causes and its own remedies. There are also inequalities with respect to income, wealth, access to education, housing, environment, exposure to, to health hazards. So again, each aspect of inequality has to be addressed with their own instruments. That's why I think it's important for the government to, to have a multifaceted agenda. It's not a single magic bullet. It has to be a comprehensive agenda to attack poverty in all of its facets. And there are very strong interactions. A child who is malnourished is not going to be able to learn. A child who is suffering from in, inadequate health is not going to be able to learn.